Hello drummers and other creatures. Today's video is going to cover the groove for Texas Flood by Stevie Ray Vaughan. The drums are played by the inimitable Chris Layton, one of my faves. The groove sounds a bit like this. Texas Flood is a slow blues 12-8 groove. That means we have 12 eighth notes in a bar. Um, I would count it as a bar of triplets. So that gives you 12 eighth notes because we have 12 triplets in a bar of 4-4. Four, four. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So whenever you hear something is called a 12-8, uh, just think of it as 4-4, four, four, counted in triplets. If you hear something is 6-8, you think of it as 2-4, counted in triplets. You don't have to, but that's, uh, to me, the sensible way of approaching it. So, our groove for this song, and for many, many other sort of slow blues numbers and some slow rock numbers as well, um, is counted triplets, meaning 1 and uh, 2 and uh, 3 and uh, 4 and uh, 1 and uh, 2 and uh, 3 and uh, 4 and... Uh, and we're going to be playing this on the ride and I'm also going to be playing the hi-hat with my left foot most of the time on the two and four with the snare drum strokes. I'm not really sure if Chris Layton's doing this uh, in the recording. I think he might be, but it's a good thing to do if you don't want to do it. Leave the left foot, leave the hi-hat foot out of it. Might be your right foot if your kit is the other way around. Okay, so our ride pattern to start with, as I said, going to play the one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, and we're going to be playing the tip of the stick on the bow of the cymbal and depending on your ride you know it's a kind of a complex instrument um, you may want to uh, explore a little bit where to play the thing but usually somewhere halfway along the sort of curved part of the cymbal called the bow you'll find a nice spot where the stick will give you a nice pingy sound Okay, so we're going to do something a bit like this. When you're playing the ride, watch out. Don't play really big strokes. Uh, even if you're playing something reasonably heavy and rocky on the ride, it gets out of control very quickly. And as you start motoring along, you'll tend to see the strokes getting bigger and bigger, I do it as well. So you want to be a little bit vigilant about how much energy you put into that stick as you play the ride. Let it kind of bounce and uh, uh, again, a nice pingy sound. Okay, we're gonna add the snare now on the two and four, and then we're gonna add the bass on the one and three. Uh, let each one of those happen a little bit. When I start playing the snare, I'm also, as I say, gonna add my hi-hat foot. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it's quite a useful thing to get used to doing, in my opinion. And that's your basic 12-8 or triplet beat. It's a 12-8, that's what everybody calls it anyway. Uh, this is normally used in pretty slow tempo songs, so even more than usual, if you learn how to play this slowly, it's, uh, it's the best thing for you, honestly. And, um, you know, you can, once you've got everything sounding nice, you can speed it up. And there are some faster songs that, that have pretty brisk triplets, but a lot of the time this groove will be heard in a sort of slower tempo song. Now, the main things uh, we want to be able to do in this is to play some bass drum variations 
and uh, some ride variations. Uh, so we'll look at both of those. Uh, at first, I'm going to show you some of the bass drum stuff we're going to do. And Chris Layton is really uh, a master of the less is more approach. He doesn't overdo the drumming. Uh, he's playing very improvisationally here. It doesn't sound like it's particularly premeditated. He's really playing with his instincts. But he's there to support his singer, guitarist, um, and the, the, the drummer and bass player uh, with Double Trouble just do a, a perfect job there. Not doing too much, but feeling absolutely beautiful while they're at it. So I'm going to show you some uh, bass variations, and what I'd like you to do is then go away and get, get used to doing these, improvise them, and learn how to play them economically, so that our kind of home pattern will always be the bass on the one and the three, and then you can add and subtract uh, some of the bass drums uh, patterns that, that I'm going to show you now. Now, what are we going to do? First things first, we're going to add a bass on the R of the one and then the R of the three. Just to remind you, if I'm counting my triplets, it's one and R, two and R, three and R, four and R. So we're going to add the bass drum on the third part of each triplet. Okay, this is what it sounds like. I'm going to do it, as I say, on the uh, R of the one and the R of the three only for now. Why did I play the crash there? I don't know. Chris Layton doesn't really play many crashes, so lay back on the cymbals, I'm telling myself anyway. Okay, so that was the bass on the R of the one and the R of the three. Next, we're going to play the bass on the R of the two and the R of the four. Again, one and R, two and R, three and R, four and R. Okay, keeping the bass on the one and three as well. So now we can play the bass on the and of, or the, sorry, the R of the one and the R of the three, and then the R of the two and the R of the four. Let's do all of them now. Let's play the bass on all the R's. One, R two, R three, R four, R, and so on. Okay, is that feeling comfortable now? If not, work on it a little bit more until you feel really confident that you can add all of those notes nice and evenly and to fit in with your hand pattern. Now, what's happening in the song is Chris Layton is adding and removing those bass drums on the R. Uh, again, I guess according to the way he feels it. If you listen to him playing live and listen to the recording, he does similar kind of stuff, but it's obviously not a sort of set pattern that he wants to play. A lot of the time we're playing bass on the one and three and just adding occasional extra notes on the art of one, art of two, art of three or the art of four as we feel it. So once you feel that you've got all those down, now you're going to improvise. Keep the bass on one and three, but now add and remove ours uh, whenever you feel like it. And at first, don't do this to the record if you don't feel 100% Ugh, ah, no, don't worry about 100%. If you don't feel like at least 80% confident you can do it, practice without the music to start with. But as soon as you think that you can uh, mess around along to the track or any other similar uh, track, get going with that. It's always a good idea to play along to music as soon as you feel able to do so. So let's have a uh, listen to an example of me dropping in and out uh, bass drum patterns on the R. Uh.
drawn to those symbols like a magnet. I, I can't stay away from them, but again, the less the more, especially with this stuff. Okay, you can now improvise your bass drum patterns, and I'm going to throw a bit of a spanner in the works and give you a look at what the uh, symbol variations are. Uh, in this particular groove, and again, very, very uh, common with this sort of 12-8 feel, we're going to add some skip notes. And that just means that I'm going to add an extra sort of swung note to my eights. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add some 16s, right? And what that means, in effect, is that in this case, on the middle note of a triplet, I'm going to double up the stroke. So if my normal uh, triplet is this, doubling up gives me this, which slightly annoyingly, I don't know an easy way to count. So I'm going to recite or I'm going to verbalize it as dang, dang, a dang. So we're going to come out of counting for a little while to practice this. Uh, the pattern again is going to be dang, dang, a dang, 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 a dang, 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 a dang, 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 a dang, 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 a dang. Okay. So again, just to reiterate between the, uh, sorry, in the, the um, second part of the triplet, one and da, uh, I'm going to play two notes, one and da. Uh. Now, there are two ways you could uh, address the feel of that. Uh, one of them is like straight 16s, or not like straight 16s, exactly straight 16s, one and da, uh, or we could play swung 16th, which has a little skip to it, one and da. Uh. Uh, to verbalize it, it could be straight, dang, dang, a dang, or it could be dang, dang, a dang. Now, interestingly, uh, the 16th that Chris Layton, is it interesting? I, it's interesting to me anyway, it may or may not be to you, but Chris Layton plays um, mostly swung 16s. Most of the time he's swinging his 16s. Um, but the band, uh, both Stevie Ray and the bass player, oh, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but... Um, the guy playing the bass, they're playing mostly straight 16s. So when you hear the bass, for instance, do 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 dum 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 da dum da da dum dum dum, those 16s are very very straight. But the uh, the symbol 16th that Chris Layton is playing are mostly swung. That's the way I'm hearing it. Uh, and if you listen very carefully, you can hear sometimes it's straight. Again, the way you play this stuff is. You work on it, but you let your body kind of feel it, whatever feels good to you. And, uh, you know, those guys worked a lot together, and I think they probably had a sort of psychic connection. Let's have a listen to how we add uh, the swung pattern a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll play uh, a little bit straight, but then I'll, I'll sort of morph into swing. And we can play the extra 16th note on any one of the counts. So we want to go... Uh, you know, one dang a dang two and uh, one dang a dang two and uh, or one and uh, two dang a dang or one dang a dang two dang a dang. You want to be able to play uh, that variation on any one of the uh, triplet groupings. So uh, I'm talking too much. Let's have a listen to how it sounds again. I'm going to play some sixteenth feel first. Uh, and now the swung feel, and I'm going to stick with the swung feel for the rest of the time, uh, hopefully. That's my intention, anyway. Now let's have a quick look at some of the fills that uh, Chris Layton's playing. Uh, it's not that complicated. We're not trying to show off or do anything too flashy with the fills, which is just fine with me. The first very simple fill is just playing the last triplet, four and a, uh, snare, high tom, floor tom. keep the ride going or, or give it a break and just play the snare and the toms. There are plenty of variations you could do uh, with that. 
I don't need to spoon feed you. You can work out how to fill in the four and uh, with the different ideas, but just simple triplets, simple and effective and very common in this style. The next fill is uh, just the snare following the triplets in the second part of the bar. So three and uh, four and uh. actually on the three, we're gonna keep the bass and the ride and then the snare is going to fill the rest of the bar. You can give it uh, a slight crescendo, a slight increase in intensity of your sound, but in most cases you don't want to overdo it. Sometimes when it's a really screaming guitar solo, you can sort of lay into everything and create a bit of an impact with this sort of fill, but I don't know, here it's low key, medium key, something like that. It's medium key, I think, like this. You get the idea. The next fill, we're going to play the snare on the two, the three, and the four. And on the and uh of the uh, third beat, we're going to play the bass as well. And to give a little bit of a uh, accent uh, on the three as well, just to highlight something, we're going to play a slightly open hi hat, let it swish around a little bit. Sounds like this. Sorry, that was an unauthorized fill on the fill there at the end. That's no good, is it? I've got no discipline. Right, but you get that. Again, these are all like really simple figures. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm offering these as a sort of starting point, really, because once you get the, the idea of it, you can do whatever you like with this as long as you don't get carried away, right? None of that flashily linear stuff here. Our next fill, we're going to be playing what amounts to quarter note triplets on the snare. The snare is going to play the three, the R uh of the three, and the and of the four. So it'll be three and R, uh, four and R. Uh. Three and R, uh, four and R. Uh. And the bass is going to play in between. So it'll be three and R, uh, four and R. Uh. Three and R, uh, four and R. Uh. So we're gonna get something that sounds a bit like this. Or hopefully exactly like this. That about wraps it up. You've got some groove ideas, you've got some fill ideas. Uh, none of the ideas here are definitive, but it'll give you a nice starting point to play Texas Flood or any other slow blues in 12-8 or slow rock song in 12-8 as well. It's more or less the same stuff. You can play all this stuff on the hi-hat as well as the ride, of course, uh, and I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, and this is a topic where there's quite a lot you could build out from there. There's all sorts of um, common variations you could do. Um, that gives me the idea to maybe do some more videos on the topic. But there you go, that about wraps it up. Now, uh, I'm not doing a very good job of advertising myself. I was told to do it at the beginning, but uh, here we are at the end. I just wanted to remind you that I'm available for one-on-one -on -one tuition. So if you have any uh, things that you'd like to deal with in your drumming, if you'd like a bit of advice and have a couple of uh, lessons, um, I don't know, if, if you think I'm good at explaining things and you might find me useful in some way, please feel free to get in touch. My contact details are in the description below, as is, again, a link to the PDF with some uh, notation of what I talked about in this video today. Now, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe as well. All that marketing stuff, but now I think it's time for you to go off and have a practice. <laughs>